G'day, how you going? Oh, I'm Ian Apples, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Where I like to teach you beginners and beyond what you can paint in acrylic. You will see the colours going up the screen there and also the size of the canvas. was. So what I'd like to do now is bring you all the way over here and just show you what I'm going to thumb out on the canvas. So here we are, the horizon line's a bit over halfway. Now I want to have a river water body of stream here with some beautiful surface on there. Not so much detail reflection, but enough to indicate reflection. And I want to have a distant hills and some trees just showing depth within this art piece. And it's going to make a great piece. Now I've got some trees here. This side land, I want to try and teach you today how to paint it upwards not just everything flat at the back of the painting like a cardboard cutout layout if you know what I mean. So I want to try and get dimension with everything and if you follow this video you're going to learn how to do it. So let's get down to the palette. So my sky is very small so I'm not going to use a big brush. I've got some soft titanium white. Now I call that craft paint but it's poster paint, student paint or craft paint. Now this here is a retarder. That'll slow down the drying time of this so as I can get my sky primed and work and paint and mix like an oil artist can get but by using my acrylics because I only paint in acrylics. All right so here we go. I want to paint my sky. So here's me mountains here. I'm, I was going to have a distant one there but I feel I might just have something small behind there. I want that to be sky. So all I need to do is get this and I'm going to laden it on to me canvas just in my sky area all the way there. Now look at that. It's on there, it's on there. It's all goobly gloopy and blobby. What I would like to do now is just get to the brush and stroke it left and right and get it to a smooth even film. Now that's still quite thick so what I'm going to do is just simply wipe that on my kitchen towel. Okay, no lint will come out of that one. And then I'll go again, just gingerly stroke that left and right like a pure gentleman and we can get some beautiful sky colours on there. Now down here I've got French Ultramarine, Thalo Blue and Titanium White out of the tube. I'm not going to use that stuff because it's got no grunt. So what I want to do is get the bottom of my sky done first. I want to get a bit of French because this has got warmth in it. Watch what happens when you add a bit of white to it. You sort of get a bit of you see a bit of um, warmth coming on in your sky. So I want some of this down for the bottom half of the sky, okay? That, that's plenty enough. So there's my sky there. I want it from about that height down. There's going to be mountains in the way, so don't worry about that. So I'm just going to put this there all the way across to about that height. There we go, that height there. I've penciled in so I know where my mountains are going. Now I'll just gingerly get that up a bit. Now that does look a bit bright so I'm just going to pick up some more titanium white on the brush as you can see there and I'll just gingerly lighten that up a bit because it did go a bit dark. There we go I'm happy with that. I'm extremely happy with that. That's just going to be the lower half of the sky. All right now wipe your brush or even if you want to be that keen wash the darn thing. Now I've washed it I'm grabbing the French ultramarine on its own and this is going to be the rest of the sky except for the tippity top. So we'll get this pretty much all there. Now what I'm doing deliberately is I'm getting it off my brush, okay, just so as I can blend this bit down now into the lighter colour. Now I might have to X stroke it, crisscross it, finity strokes, whatever you want to call them, and blend it so you get a great, well not a great, a, a good gradient of the two colours. There we go. Now I'm just going to simply pick up more of that and get it up here. It's going to get darker as it gets to the top. That can come down. There we go. Okay, that's it. That is it. Now we'll get the phalo blue and we'll just put the top of the sky in now. So coming along here, I'm going to go right up to the, the tape there. This is a different blue. Now the white has lightened it a bit, so that's okay. I'll pick up some more on both sides of the brush. Come up there again. And now I want to gingerly... See, laying this on there shows the violet coming through on that French ultramarine, and that's the warmth I wanted in this sky. Now I want to 
just gingerly use the tip of this brush because there's no paint at the tip of the brush, it's all there. If you're scared, you can wipe that off. It's that easy. Okay, and I want to gingerly crisscross that into the French under there. And while it's still pliable and wet, I want to stroke it left and right again. And we've got our sky color painted on there with lots of warmth. Now down here I've got titanium white and mid-tone grey. If you don't have that already in a tube, you can just mix a mid-tone value of grey up with your black and white. And I want to stamp on the footprint of my cloud and to make it not look like a flat cloud at the back of your painting like a curtain, we want to give that some dimension to make it look like it's coming at us, okay? And the best way to do that is, with a lot of practice as well, just let's get something here. I want to get a cloud. I'm fimbling around, giving it that whooshy look. There we go. Coming off the painting there, bang. Now grab yourself a blending brush. And when you blend the way I blend, I always like something to mop up the bits and bobs. Now I've got to pull this down. That wet paint underneath is, with the retarder, is allowing this to blend like an oil paint, okay? I want to tickle the tops, just get them constructed the way I want them to look, okay? Stop, look what's on the brush, you get a fair whack on there. So I want to wipe that and control how this cloud's going. I just don't want to go willy-nilly. I want to get it right down to the horizon there. And it can fade, fade down there like so. Now, I'm going to look in my monitor. I'm looking at that. This here's a bit iffity effity, so I'll fix that up because this is the first layer. It's roughly three layers I do in the cloud. There's one layer. Now, I've picked up some more titanium white on my, the brush I'm putting the cloud on with, and I might have something coming here overhead. Twist the body on and then kind of stop. There we go, that will do, that will do. Same thing again, I'm gonna sit that down into the sky. So I'm dabbing, twisting and dancing, twisting, looking, analyzing, analyzing is a big thing. I'm, I'm controlling the top, cause see how that looks like a brush stroke? I want it to look really fine. I want it to have that bullshit effect where it looks like, wow, that looks like a real cloud. That's what I wanna get. Come off the painting if you have to. Now I want to bring the, watch what I do here, I'm bringing the bottom down, dancing, leaving little bits of pockety bits there, meaning untouched bits. There we go. Now that looks very flat. It's what I want, it's a sweeping set of clouds. Now we're going to start giving it some dimension, making it look from this to start looking like th th shape, shape. Grab that grey that I had and just gingerly put it onto your brush. Now. As you paint, you'll learn and realize how you load your brush up will help you as well. If I had that on real thick like this, it's going to be uncontrollable. I want to just lay it onto this hog bristle fan brush that I've got here, so I know I can control what I'm going to put from the brush to the canvas. It's controllable for me. Everyone's different. Your habits will be different to mine. So find out what's working for you and how you can control it. Now what I normally want to do is I'll, I'll find roughly the bum of this cloud, the base of the cloud, which is I think about there, and I kind of come along and finger bits up like here, give it a bit of heaviness here, put a little bit there, and maybe something there. Now I'll do just this cloud first, just kind of sweep the base, the bum, the bottom of it, but don't wash too much of it away, and then sweep that up into the cloud and just blend those hard edges of that grey within the, the first layer of paint that you've put on there. All right. And we're gonna, I've got a smaller blending brush here. And I'm gonna do the same to the other cloud, and that's pretty much the second layer for the clouds. This one here can just have a, I'm just gonna get a bit That'll do, that will do it. I want to stretch this, there we go. Wipe as you go, wipe as you go. Keep the base tight and gray. Gonna be trees there anyway. And we wanna just blend that into that first layer of paint that we put there 
This is adding the weather and the darkness because not all clouds are pure white. You can see how that's given it depth. Now we'll add the yumminess. And the yumminess is pretty much what it says, yummy. It makes the clouds look more yummy, more, more nice to look at. Now normally I do them with white. What I want to do is grab some of the white, grab a big chunk of it here. I can use all that, I'm not going to use that again. And I want to just gingerly taint that with a bit of yellow. So what I'm going to actually get is just like light hitting the clouds because the sunlight, depending on how high or low the sun is in the sky, is what creates the colours in our cloud. And the yumminess pretty much comes from the, the top edge and filters or fingers its way down. And this is where you can put bits and bobs in front of each other, making the cloud. I'll do this little bit here first because it's such... I'm taking my time explaining all this and it's drying very quick, so I've got to catch it before it dries. If you're at home, you're not explaining to people what you're doing, so you'll have a lot more time than me. Bits of yumminess. Sit it down, just get rid of the harshness. It's tracing into that grey a bit, leaving this harshness here because that's adding more volume and depth to your cloud. I do want to look in my monitor. And I can see the light hitting it already. I want a little bit up here, there, and maybe a chunk here. And then sit that down into the cloud, not too much, carefully as you do it. And you can see the difference from this cloud to that cloud, how this one now has that sunlight hitting it. Starting off here, bits of yumminess. Pull it back into the cloud. Your paint, the way you've loaded it on, will govern if you've got to rub it hard, slide it, smear it, dance your brush on when you're blending. Don't just feel like a machine and you've got to blend one way. You've got to adapt to your art. Get, there we go, bang. See how easy that is? When you know what to do, I guarantee you can do it. I've had people come to my studio here and they've painted with me side by side and they can do it. Those clouds are probably a bit over the top but we've got our warmth in the sky, we've got our blue creating that sphere shape and we've got light hitting those clouds and when our mountains come down here, you know, I might add some real distant clouds here, see how I feel just to set that back. For those of you who want to see this bit getting done, you can watch this bit or you can fast forward it to the next part of the painting. But I'm just getting this into the base and it's just going to sit in front of that high cloud there. Because what I normally do with those ones is leave the top, I'll use my finger, and blend that right down to the horizon there, going into the distance. I'm using my finger because it's so small, the, the cloud, it's not a big body. Okay, that can dry, that's finished. Here's my river area. What I want to do now, just so things can go in the right order when you're laying them in, I want to paint this water in so I can bring the land to it. If I paint all the land and try and paint that onto it, it could look like it's sitting on it. I want it to look like it belongs there. We've got our sky colours. They are obviously what reflects into our water. Now the bottom half I want darker than over here. I want that real light and pale over there, okay? And if anything, the darker value can be here and that's what gives us if anything that vibe of our water instead of it looking flat. Now I'm grabbing that craft paint, it doesn't have to be the retarded bit but it doesn't matter if it's still got some in there and I can see me river there so I'll start at the bottom where the big bit is. I just want to brush this on because what this does, this stops your dry wanting canvas to be turning your paint into chalky dry snot. You want it to sm see how the sky blended? If I just tried painting the blue colours on here, you get that real dry, chalky, snotulized look about your painting, your colours, in your colours, you know what I mean? So now I'm stroking this. There's a horizon line. I'm stroking it in cahoots with the horizon line. It's just going to look the vibe that you need, I feel. You see people doing it, whether they mention it or not, I don't know, but I mention everything that's going on in my mind. 
And you know what? I'm not even in Carolina. Sorry for this little bit. I had the camera off when it should have been on, but I've just added the sky colours over that white to get the sky colours in the water. And I've painted it left and right in cahoots with the horizon line, all right? I'll grab a bit of white to lighten it up, but I'm going to put some yellow with it. Is that a hair there, cat hair? I'll put some yellow with it. Now, I'm not worried about adding this yellow because if anything, it might turn. That's too yellow. I want it to be white, but yellowy white. Um, it's going to go a bit green, hopefully. Let's see. Now, I want to get this just bright out here. Get this to there. I'll break it up a bit just like that. Now there's too much on my brush, my goodness. I've got to wipe a lot of that off. And I want to get this just pushed. Now I'm not worried about it turning this bit here green. I'm really not worried about it. Now that does look a little bit too yellow there. I'm just picking up some more white just to change the vibe of it. Here we go. See, I'm doing this first. And when the land's laid all over it, it's just going to look like a nice body of water. Now what I'm doing, I'm coming forward with the details. I'm going to block in the background trees and the, 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 the river banks. Now that paint can be thinner. I'm using a free flow acrylic paint here. And I've got me black, me burnt sienna and my burn umber. And I've got sap green down here as well. So these are quite flowy, okay? So I want to grab me sap green and some white just to get the distance there. So because they're further away, they've got a lot of atmosphere. That's why I'm adding the white as the atmosphere. Now I'm using a flat brush to get the peaks done because I want them to be kind of like the Everglades pine tree sort of look at the top. Now I've gone and put some tape here on my horizon line because I don't want to, I don't need to come down any lower. So this is gonna probably go bloody hair there up here and then start coming down. So I want the top of this, I'm just designing the top first, and I'm gonna come down maybe all the way along and then to about there. So just under this cloud, I want to get some of the sky peeking through. But if it looks a bit dumb, I can bring that back up like so. You can just finish this there somewhere, that'll do. Now, I'll just block it in and merge it to that broken up area. A lot of this is going to be covered. I don't want it just suddenly. So I want to, you know, gradiate this together. Take your time, analyse your work. You don't want that in a big hard blob of a line there where they're joined up. You've got to, that's why you analyse your work. You could see little boo-boos like that and you iron them out. That's what being an artist is. Refining your work, altering it, analysing it, looking at it until you're happy with it. I mean, there's so many ways. I've, I've, when I was learning on YouTube, there were so many simple easy ways just to stroke it up and that was it but i like to show the beginner what i couldn't find when i was on youtube looking for things so i'll try and give you people those things that can help you along the way and if you like what i'm doing give me a comment below tell me who you are say hello i'll say hello back but just remember if you don't like what i do don't waste your time telling me what a mongrel i am you just tell everybody else don't tell me Hey, and you're gonna let us see you pull that tape off or you're gonna pull it off when the camera's off? I wanna see you pull it off, mate. Yeah, okay, let's pull that tape off so we can see what we got. The, all that tape did was stop the green coming down unnecessarily. Now, I've given this a dry. I wanna block in the bank. Now, that does look a bit flat and then all the soldiers lining up in a row. It's not gonna look like that because that's just the background. When I put these other trees in front of it, they're gonna come down on angles, giving you that dimension and that bullshit effect, okay? The burnt sienna, just to block in the banks. And then on top of this, I can add the lights and the darks and the grass. And because this is a flow, free flow, softer body, it's gonna, come off the brush and onto the canvas a lot better. Why waste your time showing them on the palette there? Just put it on the canvas and do it, Ian. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So I want the, I'll grab me mouse stick. 
Now I want, there's the guts of my painting there. It's not in the middle of the painting, but the guts of it is to the right of it a bit, okay? So this is gonna start from about there and it can come up a little bit from there. Up, up, up there like that. And now, remember when I said before, cahoots with the horizon line? I don't wanna make this where it looks like you're in a helicopter looking at it from an aerial view. I wanna make it look like you're looking at it with dimension on the ground. What I mean by that, there's a horizon. I'm gonna keep my brush that way and just come out, boom. I've got to work out because I want this to come around and then back this way. I don't want to come down in a line like that. So watch what I do. You'll get the gist of it and a vibe of what's going on here. See, I'm, I've got my brush in cahoots with the horizon line. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. That'll can come back a bit. But everything there, whether you saw it or not, I felt was in cahoots with the horizon. Now, I'm gonna block all this in. This is acrylic, remember? Now we'll simply do the other side, about there, okay. And that's gonna slowly go up. Now what I'll do is I'll concentrate on this side of the river now, so that can come there like so. Keeping in cahoots, I'll bring a bit out. Come back. And this is gonna kind of, if anything, boulderize, meaning like with rocks and that, coming here and right in front, cutting in like that. Once it's all blocked in, you'll get a gist of just how it makes up the lay of it all. And we can analyze it, see if anything needs like finer points just jutting out like so. But see how that's not in cahoots with the horizon line? Don't worry about the top side of it, it's the bottom. The bottom you want in cahoots with the horizon line. Boom, like that. Because there's gonna be dirt, rocks, all sorts of bits and bobs within this. It's gonna be great. It's a lot of facets to put into a painting. I enjoy putting these facets into a painting because, I don't know, I just feel they make up a nice art piece, a landscape, waterscape, lakescape, riverscape, whatever you want to call it. If you're new to my channel and you feel like giving me some support, hit the join tab below. For the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can support my content. Get extra shout outs in lives when I go live. I don't do a lot of daily uploads. I try and keep my videos to a decent quality if I can help it. Uphill, uphill, and then it can, because I'm gonna have some, you'll see what I mean when, I, when I've done it. Now, if you look at that river from straight on, it kinda does not look like you're looking at it from a helicopter. I'm happy with that. Now that's the base color for our land mass. I wanna get the darks and the lights in there, the shadows and the tones, whatnot. So gonna come down here to our burn number and we'll put our dark values in there where I can and then I'll lighten up some of the dirt and highlight it. So we're looking that way. I want the side of this dark, because if anything, the light's coming this way. So I don't want the dark there all the way around. We've got to work out what's in front, what's behind, and just darken up this side of everything. So I'll give you an idea. So this bit here, let's just say this is a dark rock. Get it right to the water there, in cahoots with the horizon line. Boom. This is just an, as an example. And we're going to ridgelize or ridulate it or What's that word? Just make it into a rock there, like so. Keeping it flat at the bottom of the water. I'm not finishing the water yet because I want the water to kiss against all these darks and make up for bits. There's gonna be some darkness there, keeping the bottoms flat. 
It's going to be sheaves of rock and bits and bobs there. I can have some darkness way out there. Bits of rock. And if anything, where the ground meets the water, it helps for that to be a bit on the dark side as well. Get some of this there. Okay, same here. Right against the water. Now, I don't know if I said it, but I've dried all that first brown colour that I put on there, the burnt sienna. And there's just all sorts of darkness in here. Some of these darknesses will have black incorporated into it. A big word you're using there, Ian, incorporated. I'm allowed to. I'm just getting darks where I feel I can get some stuff spewing out there. It looks a bit mumble jumble at the moment. Bits and bobs here, shadow that up. Okay. Now I want to lighten up some of this burnt sienna. Okay, to get the rocks highlighted, I've sprayed everywhere on the cam on the palette down here. What I want to do, I'll start over this side here. I want to find the top of me rock, let's say here. And come into that dark bit, just like that. Um, big slithers, uh, where are we? We can go right here. Oh golly, I didn't want that to go up there. I'm just making slithers of the rock. Don't kill all that first colour we put on. This is just the actual rock colour. Now I'm going to look in my monitor. To me, that's looking like stone rock kind of edge to this kind of water body of water here. I'm not thinking too much about it, as you can see. I'm just scratching it in. If you look at just one little bit there, it looks a bit iffy effy but when you look at the whole lot, it's kind of got the vibe of... I suppose bullshit when you're looking for that word, Ian. Yeah, that's the word. And some of this is just going to taper up, because this top bit's going to have grass, green foliage sliding down into it, but the very edge to the river is stone and rock. And when I add bits of black to that darkness that's just going to create the loveliness of it all I hope and I'll add darkness as well same on this side now Deliberately got a rock here. I wanted to put this round rock there. Don't worry, that water's going to have life added to it later. There we go, I'm looking there. Bit of bright, oh, that's, don't want it too bright out there. So that pole that we had 
I'm just going to add more white to that. I better missed it. It's getting a bit tacky. And I just want to make that a lot more brighter now so you could see the difference. Lighten some of this up down here. Very gingerly and lightly touch it because it's far away. And then try and get some of this. Now don't go crazy with it. Just kind of stop Look, I'm looking in there, that's nice. It can probably do it for a slither of light there. Nice chunk of light there. Looking in there. I'm feeling the vibe of happiness within this, so that's good. Now there's no special way I've done this. I've just sort of, if anything, used my artistic license and kind of gone with the shape of the land, the cahoots of the horizon line. I'm trying not to get too much of a pattern of highlighting going on everywhere here. Now what I want to do is grab my script liner. I'm going to simply wet it and then pick up this black. I'll get a bit of water on the palette there. I've wet my brush. Now I want to get this inky enough so it doesn't kill all the depth of the color. I love doing this. Just simply find some dark bits. Oh, where are we? Very thin. Get some cracks. Just, just follow your dark bits. Let them make up the, the nonsense of it all. Bit of darkness there. And hopefully, there's a nice bit of darkness there. Twist your brush as you go. Let it make real sharp cracks within your stones and your rocks underneath all that brightness there. A bit of a crack up in that light bit there. And this just adds lovely, oh my goodness, I like that type of look to your work. And also, if you feel the bottoms of them need a bit of darkening up, you can get that darkened out there as well. And just get some cracks within everything. Take your time doing this. Stop. Look for a camera lens or something to see you're going the right way. You're not destroying it with a crazy haze of black lines. Now this stone here has a nice crack in it. So it's kind of slated, cracked, chipped rock stone, whatever it is. And if you do like this, just tell me below you like it. Now I'm ready to add the grass coming up. So before I do that, I just want to skate in some darkness for it to sit on top of that. And to do that, I'm just going to simply grab the burn number and I'd like to just blackulate that a little bit, just a little bit. So it's not quite black and it's not quite burn umber. Now I want some of this built and down. This is what my grass is going to sit on. So me, you know how I did this edge for the river? Same vibe is going through my head. Right up here. probably have a little bit dancing down here I'll start from about here just where the grass is growing onto the rocks We can have a nice piece just growing here somewhere. And this can come up here. Slither it down on that strokey into the rocks kind of vibe like that to get the ground look like it's 
coming downhill. There we go. Now down here I've got some green oxide. I'm going to load up my flat brush and I simply want to come onto that black nice and sharp. So work out and just have your grass growing onto that black and then we can trace it back up into the brown, okay? And having that dark there just makes it sit down on your painting. Nice soft, hit it softly when it's touching that dark bit. All the way out there. It doesn't matter if you see a little bit through it because that just makes up for the dirt. We'll get this all the way onto that brown cover colour there. Coming up here. Don't worry if it looks solid. Still about there. And I want to have it kind of fumbling down like these rolls, just like that. Now there's going to be a big crack of light coming between the trees here, so getting the shadows in really makes for a nice visual, pleasing to the eye painting. So it doesn't look a bit too odd. Same with this side, I'm going to go over the top here and just let it break into that dark bit there, just like that. Where's our edge? I'll make my edge about there, or oh, I want it sharp, not... So we can see what's happening. I'm looking at it and it just looks like something is missing here. So I'm just going to get a bit of green down there. I can add darkness under it later. But it just felt like it needed something tracing down there. Now grabbing cadmium yellow light here, I just want to grab enough, just load my brush up with enough of that green oxide. And then this will be my yellow green here. This is what the sun's hitting. Now, my brush is all blobbed and globbed, so what I'm going to do is wash it and reload it. Okay, I've washed it. Now it's not all blobbed and globbed. Look at that. How many of you have used the blobbed and globbed brush to start painting with? I know I have, but look, you can get a better controlled area. Now, I'm going to have an open bit here and my trees here, so all this bit here, I want to lighten it up so it looks like this, the, the light's just bursting through it all and giving it that wow factor. So this is going to sit right on the edge there, right on the edge. And I want to bring it up to roughly where I feel about there-ish. Okay, now get the paint, oh, yeah, the paint, to gingerly highlight all that green, leaving just a little bit of the green where the black is. Bit more of that, that's very transparent -y looking. And that's where it's going to be full of light bursting through there. And by analysing it, I can work out if this needs to be brighter or darker, lighter, brighter, if that makes sense. I want some of this lit up. Out there. It'll make sense when the other trees are in front of it. Now, just the slightest bits of this, the tops of them can be just 
is my camera picking that up there yeah just the slightest bits here just hitting with some of this value just to break up the darker in shadow areas sunlight all along the edges here nice and scratchy and dull over there get it right over there leaving a lot of the other green there the uh, green oxide but we just got light hitting it like that you dry every layer as you go this we're not blending it's you can draw every layer of this it's it's great to do this bit here I'm going to stamp it because it's closer that paint there I want to get a corner of it and just add some white and give it a bit of a minty vibe just to get more light hitting that corner there getting the very top it's just been hit with light it's very easy to get carried away so try not to now before I put these foreground trees in there to really bring it to life, I'll just liven up this water a bit. I want to use white, but I'm going to use the water colour. Where are we? Some of this here. And I want to mix it with white. So it's pretty much contaminated white with the water colour. Let's say here, let's make it look like some of the water is, I don't know, where are we? About here. Let it scratch. So it looks like water lacing down. There we go, a bit of water for there, kind of. And I just want to see where it's hitting the rocks here and make those kind of diamond shapes within the water. This is going to sit that land on the water and make it look a bit more realistic. water being hit by light just something different now picking up forest green I haven't used this color in a long time it'd be good to get some of that back onto me canvas so forest green so we're there we're gonna have some of this let's make sure our brush is sharp I want some of this about up here just so what I want to do is try and get something here. Bang. I'll just get a lot of these stabbing out first where I want them. And then I can get them to the height that I want them to be. Said me. A point there and a point there and a point there. Maybe a point there in the background. Just using a flat here. This is more of a opened, not a very strong pine tree palm, not a palm tree, a Everglades tree. Just blobbed, getting here scooting down into some of this here that's just scooting down it's all dark it's all bore darky scary stuff down here but we've got that light shining through from the back there 
once we finish highlighting all this. I mean, it looks a bit iffity affity, but when we grab the yellow, it'll look all right. So forest green with what's in the brush, big chunk of yellow, there we go. It can be marbly because they're trees, okay? And what I want to do is probably just the right side of them. Get some light in there, just like that. Doesn't matter if, if you lose too much of the dark, you simply put it back. They can stay dark because they're in silhouette. Just got some kind of light mushing with the green there. Come down like so. Just making some kind of dark, massive trees there, but bits of light are hitting it and some's not. And but it's a different green than our grass. I'm just using the script liner and that burnt umber and I want to get from, it can be from here, the finest trunks, just get a few all backwards and forwards from each other. About there. And, I don't know, probably put a few out here. Now, my brush isn't washed. I'm going to grab some of this lighter colour, just marbly. I want it marbly, but wet. So it's going to come off. Those trunks are still wet. And because the light's on the right hand side, I just want to gingerly let this blend and scratch into the right hand side of the trunk there. Don't worry about the further away ones. All right, now I'm just grabbing the forest green on my brush. Those trees, where are we? Let's say this one, I want to come up from there and I've got a bit of hair on there I want to use the corner of this brush dab the top and try and make me pine tree but in a way where it looks like a pine tree leaving some gaps for the trunk coming there there we go there's one it can be a bit better than that Ian it looks like snot background stuff, background stuff, foreground stuff, foreground stuff. Something up here. And you can just see those first layer of trees peeking through as well. Just change to a filbert brush. And get the point of it out there. Just trying to, because a lot of you know I'm not the best with trees, these pine trees. Something sticking up from that, yeah, look at that, that's the way. And I'm just going to use this brush on its side like that to get some decent... What are they called? Everglades. Pine trees. Okay, I'm grabbing the cadmium yellow medium mixed with the forest green there. Trees are still wet and we'll just simply do the right hand side of the trees, making it look like a tree is in front of another tree there. Something like so. And then I'll chisel the brush just to get these ones look like they're in front and behind each other. And with a bit of luck, when you squint your eyes, it don't look too bad, eh? That's what you want about. Painting doesn't have to be realistic. Now, I do get a, a few people trying to bring me down, but it never works. But listen, I'm here to teach a beginner what to paint. 
I'm not here to show you how great I can paint or how good I can teach a great painting. I'm here to teach a beginner an achievable piece of art. I don't want to do something that's out of their reach, okay? So for you uninspirable people that like to vomit hate, you're more than welcome to do it, but I will step over it and keep moving forward, okay? And this is just putting the trees with this highlight, as you can see, that'll be the back one that can stay all dark, in front and behind each other. I think that looks a bit more vibey, does it? It's funny how people will hate on your work. Why do they spend the time watching you if they don't like it? That ain't too bad for an Aussie. And I can probably just, if I feel, get something over here a bit lighter. Maybe, I don't want to bugger it up. Now simply see this colour here, grab the darkest of it, and what I want to do is probably from about, I don't know, maybe, where are we, about here, a little bit there, well there's not too much, maybe there from about here, just kind of scratch some dark business down, so from about there, start at the rock, get it to the rock, and then keep it in an up and down motion. Scratch it down. And remember it's a reflection so it can be distorted. And obviously grab some of the highlight, so wipe that off the brush, just wipe it, pick up the highlight. Add some of that yellow highlighty vibe in there as well. Just a bit here and there. I've just wiped the brush, grabbing it, and coming from here, I want to do this. Just get it lacing out so the reflection looks rippled. If you're a regular viewer, you've seen me do this splicing the reflections into the water it just gives it more of a realistic vibe grab the white gingerly over those reflections there just to sink them back down into the water like that okay that'll do i'm just going to sign this then we'll reveal it and if you're already a Patreon or a channel member, I want to thank you very much for your support. It's much appreciated. And if you want to be a channel member or a Patreon, hit the links below and help support my channel. Go. that's not too shabby is it we've got a rocky water landscape beautiful sky lots of warmth going on there and it looks good in a matted frame and i know you can do it well that was fun and exciting i really enjoyed that and if you like it you be sure to tell your friends but if you don't like what i'm doing you tell everybody also check out this other video of mine goodbye good luck and good on you <laughs>